I'm Zoe Delahunty Light, and look, Elden Ring solo is one thing, but Elden Ring with your friend Mungus with his two shields and Jimjo Jim Jam who runs around shirtless jewel wielding two Reduvia daggers? That's a whole other thing. To play with your pals, all you need to do is download Luke Yu's fantastic seamless co op mod at Nexus Mods. And once you've done that, these Elden Ring co-op tips will help you and your merry band survive and thrive. Okay, I'm going to speed through this tutorial about how to use the mod really quickly, so just skip to the next chapter if you want to get right into the co-op tips. First, find and download the mod at Nexus. Enabling it is really easy, as all you have to do is drop it into the relevant folder and remember, to add a password to the ini file. You need this password so that randoms can't come and join your game, so just make sure it's easily memorable and give it to the people who you want to play with. Then launch the mod's exe file, not the Elden Ring vanilla exe, and then once you're in the world, use the tiny great pot to open your world to wanderers, i.e. your brethren. On the other side, make sure that they're using the same ini password, and have the same version of Elden Ring and the mod downloaded, and then have them use the Melania effigy to join your world. And then you're good to go and die together, inevitably. Leave at any time by using the separating mist, and if you're the host, just be aware that using the mist will disconnect everyone. The Judicator's rulebook is available to the host wherein they can toggle friendly fire and PvP. Right, that's done. Now, on to the tips. One of the huge bonuses for playing co-op is that loot is not shared between players. What that means is that when you take on, for example, Bloody Finger Nerugius, he'll drop one Reduvia Dagger in each instance. That doesn't go to waste if it doesn't happen to suit your build, though. Once it's in your inventory, you can actually use the Leave option on it, dropping it onto the ground so your friend is then fully able to simply pick it up. Suddenly, they have two Reduvias and can dual wield them for massive bleeding damage. Same goes for looting items from chests. Just a quick heads up though, this technique is quite overpowered and it's basically a bug, so there is the possibility that it might be fixed in a later patch for the mod. Farm enemies together. It might not be the most adrenaline inducing of activities in Elden Ring, but it's quicker, and you have a higher chance of getting that item that you're farming them for. Farming enemies in Elden Ring is an efficient group activity, and that's all there is to it. As well as for the obvious reason, that the aggro is split so you have more space to deal damage, even with the increased health enemies have in the mod, enemies have a higher chance to drop the items that you need. That's because when you're killing enemies to try and get an item, each player rolls the chance to get that item individually. What that means is that now you have more players, you have more chances to roll the item you need. Simply ask your friends to drop the item if they get it and you don't. Wandering the worlds of the lands between alone isn't entirely risk-free. To prevent players from parking one AFK character in the world, which will stay alive and thus prevent enemies from respawning, the Elden Ring Seamless Co-op mod has Rot. Rot afflicts your character when you die. It's a stackable debuff that gets worse with subsequent deaths that can only be got rid of if you rest at a site of grace, which, of course, also respawns all enemies. Five different types of Rot exist and it's random which one you get upon dying. Emaciation reduces stamina recovery speed, Decay reduces rune acquisition and item discovery, Despair reduces attack, Vulnerability reduces defense, and, finally, Hopelessness reduces how much maximum health, stamina, and focus you have, and is by far the worst, in my opinion. I do love how this mechanic makes utter sense, as it's narratively sympathetic to the rot which already afflicts the lands between and our holy lady, Melania. This is another thing that could be a bug and get fixed and removed from the mod, but until it does, exploit it as much as you wish. You get a free respawn if you don't see a boss health bar. For me, this happened with the Tree Sentinel in the opening area. Instead of a boss health bar at the bottom of the screen, 
a normal enemy health bar appeared above his golden head. What that means is that when I died to it as a squishy astrologer, I didn't spectate my fellows, which is the usual way with bosses. Instead, I got a free respawn so I could throw myself into the fray once again and get killed once again. This only happened for a few people in my group, and as there were six of us in all, it could be due to the mod struggling with a number of us fighting the same enemy, but hey, if it happens to you, enjoy. Consider yourself to be too familiar with Elden Ring for another playthrough to be worth it? Then definitely give the seamless co-op mod a go in unison with the randomizer mod, as they work in complete harmony. In case it wasn't obvious by the name, the randomizer mod randomizes bosses, enemies, items, key items, and shops. For those of you who have Elden Ring's main beats and important locations memorized, this is a really neat way to refresh the game and make it a voyage of discovery all over again, and this time with a companion or two. Hunting around for items you need to progress the story isn't a slog either with the randomizer mod. You can buy map marker hints if you get stuck or just want to speed up your playthrough every now and again. First, make sure this option is enabled in the mod, then go to the Church of Ella in the Atlas Plateau and find Kale. For 200 runes times your rune level, or 10k runes, whichever is highest, decide which item you want and buy a hint related to its location, and in return, a site of grace in the item's rough area will be marked on your map, alongside the name of the area you should be searching. Item locations can also be marked using their exact map coordinates, whether that's the treasure chest location or the enemy who drops it. This will cost you 500 runes times your rune level, or 25k runes, whichever's higher. But that's not all, as you do need to do some more legwork. To get these more specific locations, you first need to defeat the main boss in the item's area. For example, for Lyurnia, that would be Royal Knight Loretta, and at Mount Gelmir, it's the Falling Star Beast. Choose who hosts your game carefully. Elden Ring in co-op uses a separate save, so it won't affect your main single-player vanilla save, but game progression events completed with friends will progress the game irretrievably. The mod separates all the save files for you, so you don't need to worry about overwriting your original save. Just know that if you want to play around in your co-op save without anyone else around, and didn't host any of the play sessions, some story details are going to be different depending on what you've done with friends. Further to the way Sites of Grace and Rot works in the Elden Ring co-op mod, I'm going to gently nudge you into being made aware that the same goes for boss rooms, in a way. Get downed by a boss and you'll respawn on the other side of the mist like usual. Your friends will still be in there though, battling away. Make sure you don't rest at a site of grace or your friends will be immediately kicked out of the boss room and might not be your friends anymore. This is to prevent players from resting, getting rid of their rot, and then just going straight back into the boss room. To have another whack at the boss, you'll have to cope with a rot debuff you've been assigned or wait for your comrades to perish. Or alternately, just hope you had the boss bar bug that I talked about earlier. And finally, me and my friends had a talk about it, and the best advice we can give is just to experiment with builds. As you'll have more than one person to pull foes, you don't need to be the be-all and end-all of damage, resistance, defense, etc, etc. With friends by your side, you can really throw the rulebook out and build the weirdest characters, or indulge in a build you've been wanting to try but you know wouldn't do too well in solo. In my group, we have Mungus with his dual-wielding shields, Jimjo Jimjam, who runs around shirtless with two Reduvia daggers, myself as Usagi Tsukino, the astrologer, Parsnip the Knight, and a wizened dragon communion woman. So just have fun with it. And those are all the tips I think are handy for the Elden Ring seamless co-op mod. Do you have any co-op tips for Elden Ring that you think people would find useful? Or any wild things that happened to you and your pals when you were playing Elden Ring in co-op? Let me know in the comments below. 
For me, this mod has breathed fresh life into Elden Ring, especially with that randomizer mod added on top. So if you're on the fence about downloading it, I really can't stress enough how easy it is to do so and how rich it'll make the world. It's truly worth it. I promise. For those of you who just can't get enough Elden Ring, check out Aoife's Elden Ring guides on the Eurogamer channel, or my Elden Ring lore videos covering everything from Rani and the Knight of the Black Knives to the Albin Oryx, what they are and where they come from. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer as we have a new video out almost every single day. Now, I'm going to go and pledge myself to Rani yet again because I am utterly indebted to her whether she's a doll or not, so I'll see you lot next time.